everybody. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Emily Henry with Oregon State University's Professional and Continuing Education Unit. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started with the webinar. We are also recording the webinar and we'll send that out to everyone that's participating so you can get a copy that way as well. Um, and I will go ahead and get started. And we also have Paul Jan joining us today who are, is our supply chain expert. So thank you again for joining us today to hear about the essential tips to improve your supply chain. Um, sponsored by Oregon State University's Professional and Continuing Education Unit. And as I said, I'm Emily Henry. I am the Assistant Director of Program Development here at the Professional, Professional and Continuing Education Unit. And then we're also joined today by Paul Jan, who we will hear from um, in just a few moments. Before we dive in, I'd like to share a few housekeeping items with you. So we want you to feel free to ask any questions during the webinar via the chat box. Um, and go ahead and include those questions to the entire panel so we're all able to see those. And we'll kind of pepper them in. We'll have time at the end for questions. Um, but we will also be looking throughout to see if there's any questions that we can kind of pop in to help clarify anything. And a link to this recorded presentation, as I said, will be emailed to you within the next 24 hours. So a little more about our professional and continuing education unit here at Oregon State University. So our unit engages the community through educational opportunities for both personal enrichment and professional development. We offer hundreds of courses and certificate programs open to the public. And these certificate programs and courses really offer tangible value through quality programming that addresses educational, professional, and economic development goals for you or your organization. And this class that we're talking about today is part of a larger certificate program, so I'll talk a bit more about that as we continue on today. So um, partnerships provide amazing opportunities for professional and continuing education um, that help advance careers, foster personal development, and benefit communities of all shapes and sizes. PACE is committed to bringing the best of Oregon State University to people of all ages and industries, and we are proud to be partnering with Paul Jan and also our Oregon State College of Business to do just that with this course and um, the certificate program. Before we begin today, I would like to share um, a little bit about what we'll be covering. So I mentioned that we have Paul Jan joining us. He's our instructor for a couple of our supply chain um, trans and transportation certificate program courses, and he's going to talk today in particular about essential tips for improving your supply chain. We'll also learn a little bit more about our supply chain basics course, as well as the larger certificate program of supply chain and transportation um, certificate, that certificate program benefit. And then finally, there'll be time for questions and answers at the end. So on to Paul. So I'd like to introduce our webinar guest and instructor for our supply chain courses, um, Paul Jan. So Paul Jan is experienced in helping Fortune 100 companies strategizing, designing, and implementing supply chain strategies. With over 10 years of consulting experience and three years of startup experience, Paul's experience spans from supply chain analysis, material management, strategic sourcing, manufacturing strategy, competency assessment, and business development. His industry experience includes retail, industrial equipment, energy, utilities, and telecom, and he was a key member in formulating a client's North American manufacturing strategy, as well as designing a global demand management process for another client. He holds a master's degree in supply chain management from MIT as well. And so I'm going to turn things over to Paul to talk to you a bit more about these essential tips um, to improve your supply chain. Okay, thank you, Emily. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, great to meet you guys virtually. Uh, so today, um, I will talk uh, about some tips to uh, essential tips to improve your supply chain to give you a foretaste of uh, what the the course and this uh, um, certificate program will offer. So here um, on this slide, I have listed the ten uh, fundamental strategies to achieve uh, supply chain excellence. So we won't go through all 10 of them today, but I will focus on uh, the first one, establish a governing council, and also uh, number six, uh, manage TCO, or total cost of ownership. Uh, I feel these two are uh, some of the 
more like one one of the uh, these two are the items that are more looked at by the companies today than uh, in the past and and companies really should uh, focus on them for both short term and long term uh, benefits so the first one would be the establishing a uh, governing council so this one uh, is listed for a reason uh, and this one is absolutely mandatory if you are um, doing any initiatives uh, driving any process improvements or any system or any just any internal in initiatives in general uh, you need to have uh, a champion so you can think about this council as a as your champion, as your supply chain champion, uh, both within the company, uh, from a you know kind of roadblock, uh, road barrier standpoint, to functional knowledge, and even to cross uh, cross department, right? Uh, sometimes or most of the time today, that uh, a supply chain initiative would involve people from other departments. So it's rarely today that. An initiative only impact the supply chain, or or sometimes people talk about as logistics or transportation. So because it goes uh, across the company, the organization, you need a champion to help you navigate uh, to uh, you know decide your directions, uh, to remove your barriers, and then to also help you influence uh, decision makers, uh, especially in the other part of your company or organization. And this uh, this council would also uh, help you make sure that supply chain is involved in early on in the stage. And this is uh, especially critical if um, the initiative is not, uh, it does not originate from supply chain or from logistics. So some other departments may have other initiatives they want to drive. And oftentimes or not, uh, it involves uh, impact supply chain. Supply chains everywhere uh, today in any organization. So having a council, just having a body, you know, um, doesn't have to be big. Uh, depends on your organization size and your uh, initiatives, like how big the project is. So you know, one, two, up to ten, uh, five, maybe a council, maybe sometimes to ten, uh, to uh, to help you uh, navigate, to have your set of strategies, uh, remove any barriers. And then ensure that uh, the relevant relevant parties get involved early on. And the next one uh, I will talk about is uh, the total cost of ownership. And this one has some. Um, I think open time. This one impacts purchasing um, quite a bit, and it's a. I think uh, something you know you can do really quickly to kind of have a mind, a change of mindset, uh, so then you will change how you consider uh, purchasing uh, going forward. And currently, you know, even in our daily life, we, cons we consider purchasing, like even purchase a car, we just consider the, uh, the purchase cost, right? We see a car that costs $20,000. I think about, you know, I'm thinking about how am I gonna shout out 20,000, either to finance it um, or, you know, have cash in the bank, uh, pay, pay it, uh, all at once. Uh, that type of thing. So that's what we see, and and you, that's what that's what we call the perceived opportunity. That's the money we're giving up, um, you know, to to in exchange for for this car. But we, often we don't think about is the um, is uh, is everything down below right, on the, on this chart on this graph. Right, so you have uh, costs associated with quality maintenance, like cars. You need to maintain the car. Maybe two or three times a year, uh, and and quality like the the brand, uh, the model you purchase is it, you know, is it quality free? You know, in the past, does it run into a lot of quality issues? And so, if uh, you know the warranty, if the warranty is up, then uh, you're ending, you have to end up paying for a lot of the uh, the costs associated to quality. And even if you're not paying for it, you know, the time, even when the car is under warranty. Uh, the time that you spend taking the car to the to the shop back and forth, right? So that is also an opportunity cost. And then so then you talk about um, back to you know most supply chain specific. Uh, then you you may involve uh, there's the inventory cost, 
um, like the warranty terms we often may not think about, right? Uh, then in, in, in the supply chain world, we'll call it contract terms, right? What is in the contract and how does it affect me uh, months or years down the road? Um, and then standardization, so if I buy this item, uh, if I need to replace anything, are there standard parts I can buy, or is it something specific uh, to the uh, to that manufacturer? So I need I have no choice but have to constantly go back uh, to the same supplier. So think about Apple as an example, right? Uh, you can't really replace an Apple screen uh, except you go back to Apple or their CPUs and you know hard drives, anything like that. So it's not a, a, a standard parts that you can find off the shelf anywhere. Uh, so, so total cost is something that we should think about. Um, I know in my past, I, I also run into this uh, fallacy of not just think about the perceived opportunity, but in actuality, anything that we uh, pursue in supply chain, uh, whether it's buying material or sourcing services, we need to think about the uh, the end-to-end -end cost, right? Not just the initial uh, purchase, but what you know comes after. Uh, they're all there's always a cost associated with every uh, everything that that may happen uh, thereafter. So back to you, Emily. All right, great. And we actually have a question, Paul, that relates to that. So, do you have a quick method to get the overall view of total cost without having to do a deep dive into each of these sections you have listed? Uh, do I have a um, a quick to method? Repeat the question. I'll of total cost. Mm -hmm. uh, could you repeat the question again? I'm sorry. Oh, uh, sure. Um, so do you have a quick method to get the overall view of total cost without having to do a deep dive into each of these different sections? Um, so purchase cost is something obvious, right? And then I would um, ask about warranty contract terms. That's something also uh, you don't need to do a deep dive, but you know that comes with the uh, when you when you purchase something, either uh, goods or services. So understanding that would go a long way. Um, and then just do some you know background uh, research on the product or the company. Does if it, if it is a service company, you know do, do they get good reviews or bad reviews? So then that give you a gauge of uh, whether uh, what you're buying in uh, is actually. Uh, you know, are, are you going to spend a lot of time worry about it in the future, or is it going to be kind of quote unquote right uh, maintenance free kind of thing? So I think these three are something you don't need to spend a lot of time, but the information should be readily available uh, to you as a buyer uh, to consider. Okay, great, thank you. So I'll um, share any other questions that come up. So please feel okay. free to ask any questions in the chat box. And thank you, Paul, so much. Yeah. All right, so I will go ahead and talk to you a bit more about our supply chain and transportation certificate and the supply chain basics course. That's the first one that's coming up that Paul's teaching. So Supply Chain Basics starts on October 16th and runs for five weeks. And there's about 20 hours of coursework over those five weeks on average. Um, the course is fully online. The whole certificate is fully online. And this first course is $487. And this program is really great for professionals who want to gain a better understanding of supply chain management and logistics. Um, so it really can cover a lot of different industries and really focuses on efficiency and quality within many types of organizations, so retail, manufacturing, tech, all the different industries, and um, this would be a good overview. So some of the things that you'll learn are ways to describe different supply chain networks and designs, understanding how members of supply chains are interconnected, which we got a little preview of that from Paul today, um, identifying best practices and challenges in the field of supply chain management and transportation, and understanding the importance of supply chains um, and that management to businesses and the global economy. And so why would you choose PACE's program? Um, so we have a few reasons why we think our professional and continuing education courses are a great fit. Um, so you'll see an immediate return on your investment as our courses are really designed to 
meet the demands of today's changing job market. So we really work with experts in the field that have been in the industry um, that also have the, the credentials to teach a course like this and, and get that immediate return on your investment so you can use those skills and put them right into practice in your, in your position. It's a great way to, to diversify and extend your resume and skills. And they're also great for personal enrichment or freelancing. So if this is a career that you're looking to get into, this is a great way to pick up some skills to enter into that market. Um, we also use state-of-the-art technology to offer you cutting-edge online and on-site education. And so we have an extensive catalog of online courses and work closely with the online degree programs here at Oregon State University um, to really put out there very high-quality online education. And so we invite you to get started today. Again, the course um, starts on October 16th. You can learn more about it by visiting us online at pace.oregonstate.edu. Or by, or by following the link on the slide. And don't forget that um, if you have any questions, you're feel, you can feel free to reach out to the information listed here. I've included my information, Emily Henry. Um, Paul, if you have some specific questions about content, would be great. And then I also have our director's contact information on here as well. We want to thank you all for joining us today. And we hope that you'll join us for the Supply Chain Basics course that starts in October. Um, we do have another question here that we'll go ahead and talk to. So is this program just for people already in supply chain or is it broader and can apply to a wide variety of professions and backgrounds? So actually, Paul, if you don't mind, I might, like, I might let you speak to this a bit as a professional. Of if I'm someone that's interested in getting into supply chain, um, would this be a good course to get started in that field? Yeah, so I can provide some feedback. I mean, I give you some feedback that I heard from my prior students. Uh, a lot of them actually have or is currently in uh, some sort of supply chain role. And what the uh, certificate, the certification program provides is actually broadens uh, uh, your view on the supply chain. So uh, some, you know, most common thing I heard from students were that they are in this role, so this is what they, you know, the role, the task is what they see and then what they know. But anything beyond that, uh, they have little understanding or maybe have no uh, knowledge of. And what this, uh, the course or the certification provides is a broad uh, overview. So you have a good understanding of, um, you know, what comes before your role and what comes after. And then so you have, you can make a better decision um, you know, eventually you could make a better managerial decision on if I execute this action or this plan, uh, what does that impact, how does that impact downstream and also up upstream from where you are. So that would, I would say, the benefit of um, uh, taking this course. And even if you are in some sort of a logistics or supply chain role today, uh, it's still very beneficial. Okay, great. We have a couple more questions. Um, so we have a question about um, how is supply chain management different from accountancy within a company? And could the skills of both professions be easily transferable to jobs in both sectors? So kind of comparing supply chain management with accountancy, it looks like, within a company and, and how those two relate. Um, supply chain, you would deal more um, Commonly, we'll think about you deal more with suppliers, so external entities to your organization uh, to ensure goods you know, are coming in or goods are going out uh, in a timely manner. And that, that could be, you know, like uh, you can think about supply chain also has a, sometimes uh, some organization group uh, account payable, account receivable on their supply chain. That could be part of it, uh, part of the uh, procurement process. So, so there is a, uh, some flavor of a hybrid between the two, um, but but we uh, we wouldn't necessarily be the one who is chasing people after the balance that they owe us and that type of thing. So that would I think uh, typically be handled by the accounting or the accounting accounting department. Um, we so so accounting would make sure at least you know my my limited understanding make sure that uh, the, the balance sheet, that the company balance sheet is balanced, uh, cash flow is good. 
uh, well supply chain, make sure that the goods and services are uh, provided in a timely manner, right, and in a, in a cost-effective way. And there is a close linkage between the two, um, I would say, in, in any organization. But, but there is, you know, you can make the transition from uh, accountant to, to be in a supply chain role. I don't see that as an issue. Great. Um, okay, we just have a little bit more on the question side of things. So um, if someone that would like to know, can they bring real examples and issues from their own businesses to work on in the course? Um, I would actually uh, welcome that. Um, I, as a, when I was a student, I got a lot of help uh, working on a, on a real um, issue that a company was uh, uh, trying to address. So I was partnered up with the company uh, for a couple of months, and we, you know, I, I worked with them, the executives uh, through through an issue. So I actually welcome that, and that uh, would make the uh, the learning more uh, applicable. I would say. Great, and this kind of ties in with that. Um, what do you think is the career outlook for supply chain managers? Are there positions out there for folks with these credentials? Um, I would say yes. I think uh, supply chain is becoming, uh, it, it has been global, uh, but it's, uh, it's changing, right? Because we, the products are changing, uh, and then where supply is coming from is also changing. So uh, think about China I may mean, no longer be the dominant uh, supplier of the world's, uh, the goods, right? Uh, if the if the labor costs uh, keep increasing in in China, so so supply chain will change, and that you know that the managers' the mindset and uh, how they manage the, their team internally within a company, and also the supply chain that the company uh, is a part of uh, will change. So I would argue that uh, getting having a, a more up up to date. Um, uh, experience and knowledge on, you know, the the uh, how the supply chains evolve is evolving uh, would be a beneficial thing for uh, managers. And I would see that, you know, companies may need more managers who are uh, knowledgeable and have some experience or have some either and also you know maybe not real like a your real life experience, but experience on case studies would also be beneficial to. Uh, to strategize, you know, different a different way to approach the uh, ever evolving uh, supply chain in today's world. Great, and we have one more question. So, what kind of IT IS programs do you use for supply chain management? So that varies. Um, I would say a, a healthy uh, mid size and up. So mid size and a large corporation, um, they at a minimum has a ERP, Enterprise uh, Resource Planning System, to uh, to collect all the information. And then from there, um, it varies to, uh, depends on the industry that you're in. So if you, let's say if you are in retail, I would assume uh, you would uh, have, your purchase will have a very Sophisticated forecasting application that's either add-on or um, custom developed uh, to fit your needs. And if you're in transportation industry, then uh, you would need a very robust uh, network um, uh, strategy, like a, a network a mapping network strategy type of a software to help you map out um, uh, routings. Right. So if you need to transport goods from point A to point B, um, but, uh, so then you need to find and point C, right? Depending if you have 10 customers, then you need to find the most efficient way uh, to route that. And, and then adding on to uh, back to retail that, you know, you need to figure out uh, where is the most optimal uh, location to place your warehouse, then you may have a different, completely different software to do that. Um, so, so it, it it really depends, um, and and this again is also evolving. And an example 
Uh, a most re a more recent example would be Amazon. That Amazon, you know, moved from a a big distribution model to um, having sort of a, a micro warehouse closer to the uh, um, to the more populated area. And they, a couple of years ago, this was on the news that they severed the relationship with UPS and they started doing, you know, the, either their own delivery or they now rely more on uh, USPS uh, because they have fulfillment, smaller fulfillment centers closer to uh, populated areas, so they are able to do that. And where they were not able to do that uh, from you know, a couple of years before that. So for all these, they need you know more sophisticated software to 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 consider the total cost uh, in in doing these transitions. So it, it the the software and IT requirements um, varies based on the industry that you're in and then the particular needs that you have. Great, that's helpful to hear how different industries might work within that. Um, we have one more question. So if a small business wanted to use a supply chain management consultant to come in and assess their supply chain and advise on optimization, um, do you have any idea what that kind of runs, I guess? So how much would a business expect to pay? Is that something that's sort of a one-time thing, an ongoing consulting? Do you know much about freelancing, I guess, within um, the supply chain world? Um, I can't give you a exact uh, fee or the range of fees, but um, I think what I, what I can advise is uh, depends on the scope that you have. Uh, I would either uh, negotiate a piecemeal rate or if it's a scope, if it's ongoing, then uh, you know you, you negotiate a fixed rate uh, with this individual. And so I, I would then uh, caution on that uh, because it depends on the industry they're in and, and then the, uh, the, the improvements or in, initially you're looking to do, there may or may not be uh, information readily available. So uh, you could consider you know, the amount of time that uh, the consultant need, uh, may need to gather information both internally and externally. Uh, so, so if you do time, time and material, then uh, it could become very costly. Where, but whereas, if you negotiate a package deal uh, with someone or a small consulting firm, then uh, it may it may be you know more beneficial on, on your end that you know they can spend. You don't need to worry about managing their time uh, to look for information. Uh, but you know then you know that you are paying. X amount of money, and you are getting a certain deliverables at the end. That's good to know, and this kind of relates to that question. So, can the supply chain management piece? If someone hires a freelancer for a small business, does that help them compete with larger businesses? Like, is that a, a real asset for the smaller businesses to have a consultant? Um, I would say, in general, uh, the answer is yes, and. Uh, because consultants, assuming you you get the right person, uh, that you know she's able to bring you different perspectives. So in in addition to help you with uh, uh, the question or the issue that you are trying to address, uh, they can he or she can bring you uh, perspectives from their prior work. And so so if you are thinking about to grow your company. Uh, so you can compete. So you're moving from small to mid-size, and maybe eventually to big uh, to large. Then uh, you know what you are up against, and so then you can better uh, plan or plan the changes that you need to do, um, you know, internally, and then uh, map out the the course of actions. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Paul, for all of your insight into supply chain, for joining us on the webinar today. I think that covers our questions. And again, my contact information up there is up there as well as Paul's. Um, if you have any questions about this class or program, um, certificate program, and would like to know more, please reach out and contact us. And thanks again, Paul, for joining us today and for all the great information. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Have a great day, everyone. Goodbye. Bye.